Hey guys, it's Adrian here, the Canadian in a t-shirt. And today I'll be breaking down the important tax changes in Canada for 2023 that you need to know. This year has been difficult with record high inflation and rising interest rates. And so the federal government has responded with some significant changes for the new year. And most of it is actually good news, which should reduce taxes for everyday Canadians and put more money in your pocket. These updates were just announced and I'll be going over all these essential tax numbers so you can plan ahead and make the most of your 2023 financial new year. I'll be covering the new contribution limits for the TFSA and the RRSP, new limits for the CPP, Canadian Pension Plan, updated tax brackets and tax credits, which affects everyone, and the brand new tax sheltered account called the First Home Savings Account, or FHSA, which will be a big help when trying to buy your first home. As always, I include timestamps for each chapter, so feel free to skip ahead. Make sure you watch the rest of my Canadian tax guide, my videos with the silver thumbnails, to learn the basics of how taxes work in Canada, what are tax brackets, the tax sheltered accounts like the TFSA, RRSP and RESP, and definitely watch my video on year-end tax saving tips. The strategies in that video are useful every year in December to lower your tax bill and make the most of your money for the new year. In this video, I'm focusing on the new changes just for 2023, so let's jump in. Starting with some good news, the TFSA contribution limit for 2023 has increased to $6,500. This is the first time the TFSA limit has increased since 2019, which is fantastic. And that's an extra $500 that you can contribute to your TFSA and watch those investments grow totally tax-free year after year. The TFSA is one of the most powerful tools we have as Canadians to build long-term wealth, but it breaks my heart that most Canadians are not using it correctly. The TFSA is not a savings account. Use it as an investing account. Make sure you watch my TFSA Explained videos to learn the rules and how to make the most of this tax sheltered growth. I can't stress enough how important a TFSA is to build your future. And the earlier you start, the better. Time is your greatest ally when it comes to investing. So on January 1st, 2023, everyone will gain an additional $6,500 worth of TFSA room. If you don't have the money to make this contribution this year, don't worry, you don't lose it. That contribution room is carried forward forever. So whenever you're ready, put that money in and start investing tax-free. If you don't have cash available to contribute to your TFSA, but you have stocks or ETFs in a non-registered account, like a margin account, you can transfer those investments into your TFSA, which I cover in this video here. This can be a great strategy, but you might have to pay some capital gains taxes on that transfer. Even so, a one-time tax is well worth a lifetime of tax-free growth. Make sure you watch that video for details. Everyone in Canada gets the same TFSA contribution room. It's only based on your age, not your income. Let's look at this table to find out the maximum TFSA contribution room that you have based on your age in the year 2023. If you were born in the year 1991 or earlier, meaning you will be 32 or older this year, you have a total of $88,000 of available TFSA contribution room. That means if you have never added money to your TFSA, you can put this full amount $88,000 into your TFSA in the year 2023. Looking at the bottom, if you were born in 2005, meaning you are turning 18 in 2023, you will have $6,500 of TFSA contribution room. And for new Canadians, this is important. You do not need to be a Canadian citizen or even a permanent resident to open a TFSA. As long as you live in Canada and have a valid social insurance number, you can open a TFSA account, even with a student visa or a work visa. However, you only start building TFSA room once you actually live in Canada and are at least 18 years old. So let's look at this table to see your TFSA room based on when you moved to Canada. So if you're 40 years old, but you only moved to Canada in 2022, you don't get the full $88,000 of TFSA room. You would only have $12,500 of TFSA room, the same as a 19 year old. You earned $6,000 of room in 2022 when you moved here and another $6,500 for 2023. For the RRSP, we also have increased contribution limits for 2023. The RRSP is a powerful investing tool to build your retirement fund and reduce your tax bill, but your contribution limit does depend on your income. Each year, your RRSP room will grow by 18% of your earned income for the previous year. 
Earned income includes your regular employment income from your job, plus your net business income and rental income if you're a landlord but it does not include investment income, like dividends and capital gains. So if you have a salary of $80,000 at your job, you'll earn 18% of that or $14,400 worth of RRSP room. But this 18% of new room is capped at an annual limit of $29,210 for 2022. So if you had a massive salary of $200,000, you wouldn't get the full 18% of that in RRSP room. You would be capped at that limit, $29,210. But good news for high earners. In 2023, that annual limit has been increased to $30,780. So if you make over 160K, you get to enjoy that extra RRSP room and reduce your taxes. Make sure you watch my RRSP explained videos to learn how it all works. There's a lot of rules when it comes to the RRSP, but don't let that stop you. The RRSP can be an absolute game changer if you know how to use it right. Let's move on to the changes in federal tax credits and the CPP, the Canadian Pension Plan. The CPP is a federal pension plan that all Canadians pay into. You'll notice from your paycheck, there will be a CPP contribution amount deducted from your paycheck. And unfortunately, for 2023, this amount is increasing. But don't worry, you're not losing this money. You do get to claim the CPP money back once you retire. But while you're working, it does feel like an extra tax. The CPP contribution rates for 2023 have increased to 5.95%. So 5.95% of each paycheck will be deducted for CPP until you reach the annual maximum of $3,754.45 for 2023. Once you've paid that maximum amount, the CPP deductions stop. So for the rest of the year, your paycheck will be a little bit higher. You'll only reach the CPP maximum if you have a salary above $66,600 in 2023. This number is called the maximum pensionable earnings. So the good news is that if you have a salary above $66,600, then towards the end of the year, you'll notice a bump in your paycheck by about 5.95% because you're no longer paying that CPP tax. And this is important. You pay into CPP every paycheck, but your employer does as well. So if you are self-employed, you have to pay double in CPP. You pay for your portion and your employer's portion. So if you're running a business as a sole proprietorship, or you own a corporation and pay yourself a salary, your business will have to pay twice the CPP amount. So for regular employees in 2023, the max CPP amount you pay is $3,754. But if you're self-employed, it's doubled at $7,508. I cover this in my video here, the downsides of running a business in Canada. So back to the good news. For 2023, the federal tax brackets have been adjusted so that everyone will pay less in federal taxes. As I covered in this video on how taxes work in Canada, we have tax brackets that start in the bottom and build on top of each other. So your first $50,000 of income is taxed at the lowest tax bracket of 15%. Then your next 50K is taxed at the second bracket of 20.5%. Then the next bracket is 26% and so on. This is designed so that lower income Canadians pay less in taxes as a percentage than higher income earners. For 2023, the tax rates are the same, but the brackets themselves have increased. So now more of your income will fall in the lower tax brackets. And so you'll be paying that lower tax rate and this will help all Canadians. Specifically, the lowest tax bracket of 15% has been increased by $3,000. So now your first $53,359 will be taxed at this lowest rate. The second tax bracket of 20.5% has been increased by $6,000. So now any income above the first 53K and below 106K will be taxed at 20.5%. And the third tax bracket has increased by almost $10,000. So across the board, all Canadians will see more money in the lower tax brackets. And so you can expect a lower tax bill overall. But note, this is only for federal taxes. Each province also has their own provincial tax brackets. So keep that in mind. For 2023, a lot of the tax credits have also seen an increase to further reduce your tax bill. The most important being the basic personal tax amount, which helps all Canadians. For 2023, the basic personal tax amount has grown to a nice even $15,000. 
This is designed so that if you earn less than $15,000 a year, you won't pay a single dollar in federal taxes. This is especially helpful for students and part-time workers, but for everyone else, you receive a tax credit. So you don't get taxed for $15,000 in that first tax bracket. Again, the first tax bracket has a tax rate of 15%. So you'll save 15% of $15,000. That saves you $2,250 in federal taxes and all Canadians benefit from this. However, if you earn more than $165,430, your tax credit gets clawed back as your income grows. Even for super high income earners, don't worry, this tax credit doesn't go down to zero. The minimum tax credit you'll earn is $13,521, and that's if you're making more than $235,000 per year. But for the vast majority of Canadians who make less than 165K, this tax credit saves you $2,250 in taxes. Another significant increase we see for 2023 is the lifetime capital gains exemption, which gets a big jump to $971,190. This tax benefit isn't for most people. It only helps Canadians who own a small business corporation and are selling their business. For example, I own a corporation, Canadian in a t-shirt Inc. And if I sold this company for a million dollars, I would be taxed on $1 million of capital gains. That would cost me over $260,000 in taxes. But with this exemption, I get to reduce my capital gains by $970,000. Instead of getting taxed on $1 million, I only get taxed on the remaining $30,000 of capital gains. So instead of paying $260,000 in taxes, I'd only be paying around $5,000 in taxes. This is one of the best benefits of starting a business in Canada. You can eventually sell that business and that sale is extremely tax efficient. One of the most exciting tax changes for 2023 is the introduction of a brand new tax sheltered account called the First Home Savings Account or FHSA. This is designed to help Canadians save up for a down payment on their first home and it combines the best benefits of both the TFSA and the RRSP. All the money you put into the FHSA can be invested, grown, and eventually withdrawn totally tax-free, just like the TFSA. And even better, whatever money you contribute will deduct from your taxable income, lowering your tax bill just like the RRSP. This is a game changer and I'm very excited for it. However, this legislation hasn't been passed just yet. So some details may change, but here's what we know so far. The FHSA will have a lifetime contribution limit of $40,000 and an annual contribution limit of $8,000. So if you put in the maximum $8,000 a year, it will take you five years to max out the FHSA. Again, this isn't confirmed just yet, but we have a tentative starting date of April 1st, 2023. So I would suggest that you plan ahead and try your best to save up $8,000 for 2023 and take advantage of this new investing account. So far, the eligibility rules are that you must be 18 years old, you must live in Canada, and you must be a qualified first time home buyer. That doesn't necessarily mean that you've never bought a house, but you can't have lived in a house that you own for the past five years. So if you do own a house as a rental property like myself, and you've never lived in it, you should be eligible for this new account. There are also some special rules involving divorce and separations. I'll be making a whole video on the first home savings account once the bill gets officially passed and we know the details for sure. So there you have it guys. Those are the most important tax changes for 2023 that you need to know. I know taxes aren't the most exciting thing, but it's so important to learn the rules so that you can make the most of your money. I always say, it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you keep. And I'll do my best to teach you how to keep your money in your pocket. And make sure you watch my Canadian tax guide to learn how. Thanks for watching guys, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Every thumbs up and comment really does help me build this channel on YouTube, and hit that bell icon to be notified of my new videos. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Facebook, at Canadian T-shirt, click my link in the box below, or click the links on my homepage. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you guys on the next episode of the Canadian in a T-shirt. Bye guys.